Welcome back. Let's look at some examples. A May 2000 Gallup poll found that 38% of a random sample of 1,012 adults said they believe in ghosts. We want to find the margin of error for this poll if we want 90% confidence in our estimate of the percent of American adults who believe in ghosts. Okay, so we want our margin of error. That's going to be what we add and subtract from our estimate. So we're going to get the Z star from table T. The Z star for 90% confidence, you're going to look for a confidence level of 90% at the top of that table, and then down at the bottom, it's going to give you what the Z star is. It's 1.64, so we need to go 1.64 standard deviations on either side of our estimate times the square root of our P hat, which is 0.38, times Q hat. Any Q, whether it's just plain Q, Q hat, later we'll talk about a Q naught, that's, they're always going to be 1 minus their corresponding little p, okay? So in this case, p hat. So 1 minus 0 0.38 is 0 0.62. Divided by n, we had 1,012 adults, so 1,012. And so we get a margin of error of 0 0.025, and you can leave it like that. Or you can go ahead, since it says we want to estimate the percent of adults instead of the proportion of adults, we can do our margin of error as a percent, so it would be 2.5 percent. Explain what the margin of error means. The pollsters are 90 percent confident that the true proportion of adults who will say they believe in ghosts falls within 2.5 percent of the estimated proportion, 38 percent. So it's the amount of leeway that we have to have on either side of our estimate in order to obtain our level of confidence. If I want to be 99% confidence, confidence, will the margin of error be larger or smaller? Okay, so I want to be more sure I capture the true proportion. So it's going to be larger. When everything else is held constant, to gain confidence, we lose precision, which means we have a wider interval. Let's test our answer to part C by finding the margin of error for 99%. So the only thing that's going to change, okay, we still have the same p hat, the same q hat, the same n. The only thing that's going to change on this right-hand side of our little equation is going to be z star. Because whenever we change our confidence level, we change the number of standard deviations we need to go on either side of our estimate. So again, if you go to table T, find 99% confidence across the top. At the bottom, you'll get a critical value of 2.56. So our margin of error is going to be 2.56 times the square root of 0.38 times 0.62 over 1,012, and we get 0 0.039 or 3.9 percent. So we're going to go more percentage points on either side of our estimate of 38 percent. So we will have a larger um, interval. In general, if all other aspects of the situation remain the same, will smaller margins of error involve greater or less confidence. It's going to be less confident, okay? We're going to be more precise, so we lose confidence. Remember, anytime you gain confidence, you lose precision, but the opposite is true, too. If you lose confidence, you gain precision, and it works in either direction. So we gain precision here, so we lose confidence. All right, now we're going to look at another example, one about being an only child. In a survey of 226 randomly selected college students, 20 reported being only children, children with no siblings. Estimate the proportion of students nationwide who are only children. So we've, we can figure out our P hat here and then create our confidence interval around it. First, though, we've got to check our conditions. Okay, so we're going to check the conditions to the extent that we can for constructing a confidence interval. It is likely that each student's sibling status is independent. The sample was randomly selected, and there are more than 10 times 226, 2,260 college freshmen. And there were 20 successes, and then if we subtract, we get 206 failures to be only children. And so we've checked all three of our conditions that we need to check there. We've checked um, that, they, that there was random selection. 
we've checked that our sample is no more than 10% of our population. So both of those give, um, I don't know, evidence toward the sibling status being independent. And then um, we've checked that our sample size is large enough by checking that there are at least 20 successes, I mean, at least 10 successes, excuse me, and 10 failures. We want to construct a 95% confidence interval. So this time, instead of actually going through and finding Z star and then doing the square root P hat times Q hat over N, we're going to use the CAS because it's important that you know how to do this. I want you to be able to do it by hand, but it's extremely important that you can do this using your calculator because on the AP exam, you're going to want to move through these kind of calculations very quickly. You don't want to have to go sifting through different um, tables unless you absolutely have to. All right, so you're going to go to your scratch pad and you're going to go to menu and select statistics and you're going to do um, here right now it's highlighted on stat calculations, but you want to come down here to confidence intervals. Okay, see how here it's kind of embedded behind there. You can see it went down to confidence intervals and then under confidence intervals, you want to go to one proportion Z interval. Okay. Um, you want to go to one proportion Z interval. All these others are set up for different things. Um, the Z interval, T interval at the top, that's for means it won't give you good menu items. You won't be able to input your information well if you choose the wrong one. So you want one proportion Z interval. When you choose that, it's going to ask for the number of successes. So there were 20 only children. And then it's going to ask you for N. That's your sample size, so 226, and the default is 95% confident, so you should be good to go there, and then you click OK. If you have a different kind of, different level of confidence, just change it, and you'll be able to click OK, and you're going to get a result like this. So you get C lower, C upper. That is the lower bound for your confidence interval and the upper bound for your confidence interval. So, um... 0 0.0515 to 0 0.1255. You also get your P hat, okay? What the actual estimate was, the 20 over 226. That's what this value is. You get the margin of error. If you take the margin of error and subtract it from the P hat, you'll get your lower bound. If you take the margin of error and add it to your P hat, you'll get your upper bound. And then you also are reminded of what sample size you have. And that can be really helpful if you accidentally typed in the wrong thing. Okay, let's say we accidentally did 266 instead of 226. This lets you see, um, you can see up here too what you typed in, but it reminds you down here. Okay, so our confidence interval, the way we report that back, yeah, you can either leave it as proportion or you can um, write it as percent. It does say estimate the proportion, but if percents make more sense to you in your head, you're welcome to change to that. But the proportion is um, from 0 0.051 to 0 0.126. We're 95% confident that the true proportion is somewhere between those two values or between 5.1% and 12.6%. We're going to interpret our interval. It's very important that you be able to do this, okay, and that you understand what you're being asked to do when you interpret your interval. You're being asked to put into words what this interval means, and you need to mention the confidence level. We are 95% confidence based on this sample, based on the P hat we got from our sample, that the true percentage, that's very important to put that to make it clear to the reader that we are estimating, based on a sample, something about a population parameter. The true percentage of all students who are only children is between 5.1% and 12.6%. Okay, we, we declare our confidence level, which is important. We indicate that, it, that our particular in, in, interval is based on our particular sample, and we make it clear that what we're interested in really is the population percentage and we put it in context of all students who are only children and then we say we we include our values from our interval is between 5.1 percent and 12.6 percent that is how you interpret an interval now the next question is explain what 95 percent confidence means in this context Okay, so here we interpreted our interval, but we make a claim about being 95% confident. So somebody asked, well, what does that mean? 
continuing to use the same methods, 95% of all such random samples would produce intervals that would contain the true percentage of all college students who were only children. So this is saying that if we repeated this process over and over again, we'd make a whole bunch of intervals just like we saw at the beginning of the of the lesson, and 95% of those intervals would, uh, pr would capture the true proportion. Now, we don't know what that true proportion is, but 95% of all the intervals that we would create would capture that true proportion. Okay, pilot study. A state's environmental agency worries that many cars uh, may be violating clean air emission standards. The agency hopes to check a sample of vehicles in order to estimate the percentage with a margin of error of 3%. So there's our ME is 3% and 90% confidence. So there's our confidence level and we can go find our Z star based on that. Remember you use table T. To gauge the size of the problem, the agency first picks 60 cars and finds nine with faulty emission systems. So this is just a little pilot study. How many should be sampled for a full investigation? The reason they give us this information is we can get our estimate for p hat. We don't have to use 0.5 because we have a reasonable estimate to begin with. Okay, so like I said before, Margin of error equals z star times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. Now, if you want to memorize it in the form where n is already solved for, that's fine, but I, I'm going to work it out this way. p hat we need so that we can figure out p hat and q hat. p hat is 9 over 60, which is 0.15. So we've plugged in the 0.15 for p hat, 1 minus 0.15 for q hat. n is what we're looking for. Z star we find using table T it's 1.64 and the margin of error was given in our problem it was given as 3% so 0 0.03 so this 1.64 remember you find by looking at table T look for your confidence level across the top you want 90% confidence and then you go down to the bottom and it'll tell you what the critical value for Z is okay so let's solve for N so we're going to divide both sides by 1.64. So 0 0.03 divided by 1.64 is equal to the square root of the product of 0.15 times 0.85 over n. Now, you don't want to actually divide that out because you'll want to round, and you don't want to round to the end. So we're solving for n. So what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides, and that will get rid of the square root sign. So we're going to get 0 0.03 over 1.64 squared is equal to the product of 0.15 times 0.85 over n. Okay, so let's see. Let's multiply both sides by n, and that's going to give us 0 0.03 divided by 1.64, that whole thing squared, times n equals 0 0.15 times 0.85. So we're going to take this um, factor, uh, here that's multiplying n and we're going to divide both sides by that and so we're going to get n equals 0 0.15 times 0.85 divided by 0 0.03 over 1.64 squared and so that gives us n equals 381.012667 and really we should go ahead and use n equals 382 in that case so the n there should be 382 all right, guys, I um, will see you in class next time, and we will do some rounds. Have a good day.